Hello everyone and welcome. Thank you for joining this webinar today on the topic of powder hydration in the pharmaceutical industry. My name is Jean-Marc Hanna and I'm a senior field application specialist at ILC Dover. I'm specialized in aerosol science, containment and contamination transfer and I'm based in Switzerland. Now, let's start the webinar. Doesn't go. Oops, it does go. So, what are the problematics? What are the what are we looking to achieve when powder transfer is involved? Many factors have to be considered: weight, powder flow, humidity, chemical properties, product stability, but also risk and safety assessment and delivery efficiency. Powder can create compact and agglomerated blocks and powder behavior is never standard as a kitchen salt or cooking flour. We will show you how I'll see Dover handles these challenge, challenges sorry, and the expertise we bring in order to achieve these objectives. Now, let's turn to the topic of the day in more details. The subject of today's presentation takes place in a phase of the pharmaceutical workflow in chemical synthesis. We are in these production processes considering many steps from the arrival of the, of the raw product, the sampling and weighing of the required quantities of powder and to several further transformations from offloading powders into drums to offloading FIBCs into tanks. FIBCs are flexible intermediary bulk containers. These operations might be imposing the handling of potent products with low OEL and high levels of concern. We will focus on the step that has the objective to mix a powder with a solvent, usually water or sometimes other liquids. This step is occurring is an, in an hydration tank and is part of an overall production process leading to the oral solid form of a pharmaceutical drug. The following workflow illustrates different possible stages of production. We can draw a parallel with biopharmaceutical workflow where the media preparation step also involves mixing powders in a liquid and obtained a perfect mixture. Then let's talk about what are the main challenges of powder hydration. When you have already faced these challenges, more realistically, you will say, we need to provide a solution to deliver powder into a hydration tank and facilitate the mixing process. It looks simple on the paper, but tanks can have various sizes because re required quantities are varying in relation with batch sizes. And driven by the, these increasing quantities, the need to handle powders in a safe and efficient manner is fundamental. Now, let's talk about the methods to deliver the powder into the tank and mix it with water. Let's start by the manual charging method. Manual charging has multiple disadvantages and risks, such as exposition of the operator to the powders generated aerosol, coating the internal sides of the vessel all around, Lack, the lack of efficiency for powder mixing because a big lump of powder is dropped on one side of the hydration tank. Even if you think the contrary, this method is still vastly used in pharmaceutical processes. And to add another layer, manual charging brings safety issues for the operator, such as 
risk of falling or all other catastrophic events that you could imagine like sprayed in a bag content in the room when it burst after a fall. Protection of the, pro the operators is mandatory by individual protective equipment. And this method turns on all red lights for operator health and safety. If you consider containment and protection of operators, when the containment is limited to a PAPR or directly a protective individual uh, combination or suit for an operator, you have missed something. And let's think now about the operational ergonomics. Ergonomics is not only about powder handling, but also about the practicality of the workstation to accomplish the task. Bad posture has consequences. And if we think again, why use a ladder? Why use steps and sta stairs? Why does an operator have to carry powder? What functions should we perform to reach the goal? Then let's jump to the next method with IBCs and FIBCs. IBCs, intermediary bulk container, are bringing some improvements as they need to be used with the lift and removing the health and safety issues. FIBCs, flexible intermediary bulk containers and single use bags are procuring an additional advantage to avoid the cleaning operations. The delivery speed of the powder is improved, but some powders with bad flow are still creating difficulties for the delivery because of their hygroscopic behavior. They require additional support equipment to help the delivery. I can mention, for instance, sodium dehydrate phosphate becoming like concrete when just drops of water are spread on us, is spread onto the, the powder. Another issue with this system is, is often the is often sorry the butterfly valve uh, enabling the powder to go into the tank, which creates a uh, limitation in the aperture. So let's speak about the next method. Dense phase pneumatic transfer. As long as it, work, it works, it's a good system. It's a very old system we, we have seen everywhere in the world. But then when it's not working anymore, this system consumes labor and hours in maintenance because of a clock filter, a powder valve blocked by fine dust, the distribution line cleaning and some contaminated holes. It requires height above the tank and the vacuum pump installed in a technical area consumes high energy. Even if it's, it is a, a semi-automated system, it does not improve what FIBCs are providing in terms of performance. Then, when if we consider the bigger picture, why do we deliver the powder alone on the top of the vessel? Is there a better way to dispense the powder in order to mix it with liquid? Why not bring in the liquid to the product as a carrier media? It's what brings me to the next method, which is the rotostator device. This method is interesting for mixing because it enables the destruction of small clumps and mix the powder with liquid to carry the powder mixture to the tank. However, one disadvantage of this method is the increase in the product temperature by the shearing forces imposed. Another issue is the complexity to clean this equipment. So, there is a better method which is providing considerable improvement. The jet mixer. The jet mixer offers powder into liquid delivery system with mixing capability. It's a one-step powder into liquid addition with efficient turbulent mixing. The mix jet mixer uses the venturi effect to help mix the powder with liquid enabling to make a 
perfect powder liquid mixture. The injection system consists of an inlet pipe, the injection chamber, an outlet pipe, and a connection for the powder in inlet. As there are no moving parts, the jet mixer is perfectly suitable for ATEX application and environments and explosive environment. And it can be installed remotely with the addition of a second pump. This system enables the powder to be discharged from several different containers. Pressure is measured before and after the mixing chamber. A pressure sensor sits in the chamber, allowing the whole mixing process to be monitored. Now, Let's just see an example. This is an example of an application design where the jet mixer stands on a trolley. The whole system require, requires a connection to the power supply, compressed air, and to the water line. The operators are manually emptying bags into a power feeding hopper. And as you can see here, Another design shows a power feeding valve fitting between, between the hopper here, that's the hopper, and the jet mixer on the bottom, which is hidden. And the jet mixer, uh, sorry, I lost the, the element, excuse me, and the jet mixer for powders with good flow specification. In orange, you can see here a cleaning in place system which is fitted to rinse the hopper and all the inside of the of uh, the equipment to be able to swap to another kind of powder. These units are very flexible and they can be used in many occasions like uh, when you want to connect them to several vessels. This is a good sketch of how the connection can be made between the compact units and different tanks. The operator can perform the transfer of different quantities of powder into several containers with the same unit. And if you work questioning yourself, as I can't see the feed of questions, the equipment design has to be suitable for the quantities delivered. So as you can see here, Several sizes for the jet mixer and the hopper are available. Here you can see a small hopper. Here you can see a big hopper. The jet mixer design and sizes are related to the volume of powder you want to mix into the, into the water and so forth. So now let's discuss about a real case study of a powder hydration realization. Let's analyze this case study where the requirements are to handle powders with any flow specification and a wide range of solubility properties. Propose a perfect mixing of the powder and water without operator action. Avoid operator's exposition to fine dust. Avoid powder bridging before it's mixing with liquid. Determine the mass of powder remaining in the process and finally avoid cross contamination. The system design consists of four main equipment, which are here described as steps. And last but not least, the whole system needs to be compliant with the following ATEX requirements and conditions, which are not very demanding. So, the base studies of the whole process includes several steps. Three sequences in blue or in orange, where operators are involved, and the four processes are included in those, in those diagrams. A final cleaning cycle will enable to reset the whole system for the new powder delivery. And if we now discuss about related functionalities, 
their attitude to the system to protect the operator from fine dust, to weigh the powder dispensed into the water, and to risk and for the last one, to be able to clean the whole equipment, enabling a new batch to be delivered. The final PID, P and ID, process and instrumentation diagram resulting from the studies will include all these features. So let's start with the first step. First step is the hopper. The hopper is the equipment on which the operator is acting only. After registering, she, uh, registering the batch, he empties the bag. The grid at the bottom of the hopper is not present uh, all the time. It depends if the next step of the process, which is the delumping, has to be in operation or not. So let's jump to the next step, which involves the jet breaker, a patented equipment which enables efficient and reliable powders delumping. When the powder is, is uh, delivered from bags, it can be it can have a perfect flow, but sometimes and frequently powders become blocks of concrete, uh, blocks of uh, agglomeration of powder. So this equipment is suitable for any powder flow or and any chemical properties. Single block of up to 50 centimeters are reduced to a few millimeter grains in one step, and a lab breaker grid is available in different sizes. As you can see here, I'm going to take the laser pointer, and that's the lump breaker grid. It's an easy process, which is designed in compliance with the two GMPs. This equipment can be combined with other devices, we'll discuss about that a bit further, or can be used as a standalone unit to delump the the powder delivered. It's a CIP compliant and ITEX compliant equipment for zone from 0 to 20. And now just showing you a nice movie because it helps people to rest about my way to speak English. So you can see here a jet breaker in operation. It is made with a an asymmetric chamber. The movement of the rotor forces the product through comb teeth around the housing. If the grinding torque required is too great, the gear motor stops immediately and restarts in the anti-clockwise direction. Maximum torque is detected by measuring the current consumed by the gear motor. The rotation can be inverted in a manual or automated manner. And at the end of this movie, we are going to collect some ice cubes. So after the, after the use of this jet breaker, the powder in grains are collected onto the next step, which is a powder feeding valve or powder valve as I shown here. Uh, if you imagine the wheel of a water mill, it has exactly the same functionality. The rotation speed is calibrated according to the powder solubility properties in order to deliver the right maximum quantity into the next step, the mixing step in the jet mixer. It uses a pneumatic actuator. So, have another movie, probably the last one to show you, showing the rotation of the powder valve, helping the dispense of powder. And this is working like a, the wheel of a water mill. So then the final step with the jet mixer. As you can see here, I'm going to use again the pointer. You can see in this uh, jet mixer in action, the water stream going from 
upstream to downstream. The powder, when it is dispensed by the powder valve, is directly mixed into the stream and conducted to the, to the hydration tank. So the solubility of the powder is, is helping the powder to be completely mixed into the water from all the journey, its journey into the pipes to the tank. This system on this particular project has been fitted with a cleaning place system on the washing line, enabling a perfect, uh, perfect clearance of any contamination from batch to batch. So if we run a proper cleaning place system after the cleaning in place cycle and drying cycle, we could use a different kind of powder in different quantities. So let's see the final execution of the of the system. As you can see, the finalized system has a platform with a tray at heap level on which the operator rests the bag. This is a part, this is a part of the ergonomic. If the, if, the cust if the operator is not uh, holding the bag, above, the bag above his hips, it helps him to accommodate with this kind of uh, workstation. The platform is not mechanically connected to the system to low weighing of the offloaded powder. ATEX constraints have slightly modified the final results, but are, have been easily managed. And if we go more in details about the final execution, the qualification of this equipment has included Air speed, air speed at operator levels, because as you can see here, there is a dedusting unit. This dedusting unit is sucking the air from the position of the operator to prevent him from being exposed to the uh, generated aerosol from opening the bags. And the air is brought into this dedusting station and uh, through a HEPA filter and be reintroduced into the atmosphere of the room. The CIP features in the helper, as you can see here and here, enable, they enable an aspersion of internal surfaces of the system in a repeatable and validated manner. Dry air is introduced through the port at the back of the hopper of the unit here to dry the internal surfaces before a new operation. Now we are going to see some other examples very similar to this one. Like this one is a powder hydration station for biopharmaceutical application. As I said, they are very similar constraint, very similar problematic. This one is an example of a realization of a dedicated to an easy biopack offloading in a contained manner. Easy biopack is one of ILC Dover's single use powder transfer system. Here it contains quanti known quantities of powder as a buffer and it's docked to the top of a of a jet breaker by a lifting system. The powder is dispensed. When the jet breaker has uh, done its uh, action, the powder, the result is dispensed to a powder feeding valve and then a jet mixer. And the result is uh, a perfect mixture with powder and liquid. The next example is an hybrid station. We've seen the station on the left, but the station on the right is very similar with the possibility to include as well the, uh, the delivery of what is inside an easy biopack of a big volume. Here, the hopper is limited for manual offloading of bags under 25 kilos. And uh, when 
we are using this kind of easy biopack if it's for above uh, weight above uh, those 25 kilos for more than 25 kilos sometimes more than 100 kilos etc that is in the range of the easy biopack possibilities capabilities so and the final example of a hydration station is an hydration station dedicated for big bags, big FIBCs. This hydration station works nearly in the same way as the, the one we described previously, but it's much, much higher, much higher, much taller. A massaging system, as you can see here, enables the safe and complete offloading of the powder contained in the FIBC into, into this uh, enclosure. This enclosure here is composed of a docking system enabling a safe and contained docking of the bag to this enclosure and, and uh, prevents the operators to be exposed to the, to the powder. Then the the jet breaker is receiving the big lumps which are broken by the massaging system to break them in smaller grains and dispense them to the same casual uh, strategy, the powder feeding valve and the jet mixer. So we're going to see that a bit more in details here with colors. Here you can see the FIBC which is lifted here by a hoist, hoist and the massaging system, which is massaging only two sides of the bag, helping the clump to be broken and to be delivered in, into the, the jet breaker. Load cells are here as well, used to, as in the previous uh, examples, to weigh the dispensed powder into the liquid. So it's working as a differential weight and the precision is around 400 to 500 grams. And if you see all the system, here it's not shown, but we have a cleaning place solution introduced to clean all the, all the system from the docking system to the bottom of the unit and to the including the jet mixer. And that's that's the the last example I could show about a powder hydration solution to be able to mix powder of different kind of properties to to liquid. So what are we solving? So thanks to IC Dover's expertise these systems provide efficient powder mixing, the ensure safety, and bring flexibility to suit any powder hydration application. If, there, if the risk assessment is assessing uh, OEB4, OEB5 risk, we will need to assess what equipment or what part of the transfer needs to be contained uh, on top of what has been designed here. And uh, it's quite casual for us to perform it. But the results, the final results of these solutions to, for powder hydration is that we make the operator's life easier and we bring yield enhancement because uh, mixing powder with water is less complicated and more automated. Thank you for listening to my uh, presentation and uh, I wait for your question. Thank you, Jean-Marc. Um, at this time, we don't have any questions, but we ask that you uh, reach out to us through our website at ilcdover.com. Um, each of each person on today's webinar will get a copy of the recording um, here shortly, and we appreciate you attending. Oh, hold on. Looks like we might have Yep, so we do have a question. Good. Uh, question is, what velocity range can the system work for 
we routinely use uh, liquids of 500 to 1,000 CS. Okay, so that that's the qu question I will not be able to answer apart if I ask one of my colleagues who's not available at the moment, but I need to come back to you uh, very quickly about that. Okay, all right, great. And we have another question. Um, how to proceed when we have several solids to add to the reactor, but with very different amounts, um, 1,000 kilograms, and then there are several at two kilograms. Okay, so that's that's another that's another another funny question, but uh, uh, it can be it depends on how the product is uh, carried before. Is it carried into IBC of uh, uh, loading a thousand kilogram or or any kind of uh, any kind of other solution? If, if it's an FIBC, we could use the small system, but we obviously have to have two different solutions. Uh, injecting 1,000 kilos into water uh, will need to have time. And uh, the difference between a small amount, what was the small amount? Uh, sorry, you were mentioning, uh, Stephanie? Two kilograms. Yeah, so those kind of small amounts need a small a small powder station it depends if it's uh, potent or not but we will need uh, two separate uh, system to connect uh, uh, to connect uh, for one uh, the FIBC for example but the other one will need a, a small solution it depends how how this uh, product are packaged and how you want to dock it to uh, to the hydration system uh, and uh, what is the as well the behavior of the powder concerned if it's the thousand if a thousand kilo is a is a not flowing powder we need to have uh, all the all the solution to destroy the clumps and create powder to flow into the the liquid. Uh, for the five kilos, it's much more it's much more straightforward. You you have just to use a, a single system. If if it needs a, a containment, we'll need to have a small isolator or a small bag to deliver it, or a small port to connect to dock a, a, a small bag holding this uh, system. If it's on the same, and to finalize, if it's on the same tank, we will need to assess as well what is the the what is the the first powder to get into the tank. Great. Um, so we have another question on the big bag dispensing station. Where is the separation between weighing and non-weighing equipment to ensure 400 to 500 gram accuracy? Okay. Oh, the uh, going to try to come back to oh, try to come back to the presentation. Here you have this load cells here. So um, the difference, the 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 what the the cells force, the vertical cells force are located uh, here and man managing all the bag as well, including so the partition between what is not way and what is way is here. So you have uh, you can have uh, 500 uh, grams of difference. Of consideration, you have four cells, and I can't see, I can't show you on the other side, but they are all from here. Is it answering a question? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, well, if if the person has additional questions, we'll definitely reach out to make sure we get that answered correctly. Um, I have one I, more I, question. Just, okay, sorry. Go ahead, Jean Marc. Just, uh, I wanted just to add something here uh, here you can see as well on the hybrid the load vertical cell load cells 
which are designed directly on the bottom. They can handle quite a quite a high load, and uh, they are designed to handle as well seismic risk. So it's not they are not designed to be very precise. 500 grams is uh, what they they could do. Next question. Great. Um, yeah, one of the final questions we have is, have you considered a single-use or hybrid stainless steel SU version for bioprocessing? The answer will be no. <laughs> no. Uh, it depends on the if it's a uh, it's a, if it's a stainless steel st single-use system. Uh, we need to need to understand in which context uh, you are asking this question. We are usually using, uh, and it's one on, of our added value. We are using FIBC's flexible uh, uh, solutions and single-use solution we are manufacturing because because of the way we can uh, dispose of those solutions. If we think about uh, stainless steel single-use solutions, I think we will have missed something uh, in the design and in the solution. It's not very easy. When we speak about single-use solutions which, uh, which are in stainless steel, uh, I can remember only for some application in isolators, in containment isolators, where where we must not reuse what is in the isolator, for instance, uh, a scale. And that is often uh, disposed of. But we will not try to dispose of, to dispose of stainless steel uh, uh, equipment or, equi or stainless steel uh, designed uh, uh, systems. Otherwise, our study would have been, would have gone the wrong way. But we, we, we can, if you have something in mind which is more precise and if we can understand the context where you want us to answer your question, we will be very pleased to answer your question. Great, great. Yeah, and for any of the other few that had trickled in here, um, we'll be sure to get back to you on uh, the answers to those questions. And again, um, don't hesitate to visit our website at ilcdover.com. And we appreciate your time today. Thank you, Jean-Marc. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for your, your presence. Thank you. Bye-bye.